Hello everyone, it's Christine Stitch All The Things. Welcome to my channel today. Um, I decided to do a stitch with me and I have literally no theme. No particular subject to talk about. I just decided to start stitching and start talking because we all know I can do that. Um, I'm really bad at, in my Stitch With Me videos, telling everyone what I gotta switch my needle. I got too big of a needle. <laughs> what this thing is. I, I sort of made a vulgar thing at you guys. It was on accident. Um, I'm, I'm choosing a different needle. This is called a trolley needle. Yarnworks makes them. And uh, they're really common. Well, I shouldn't say really common, but I know uh, people who needle point, some needle pointers use them to keep their threads, uh, keep their threads lying even next to each other. Um, and so I like them so much. I like the idea of that so much that I started to do the same thing. I bought one and I love it. I use it when I stitch with two strands. Um, <clears throat> if I'm only stitching with one, which I prefer nowadays, uh, but for these videos, I have to find a project that has two strands because that means I'm stitching on a high enough count that warrants having two strands and I can use my glasses instead of my magnifier. Um, let's see. Anyway, um, I some people will ask me, I, and I have to say right now, my work is here over over here, right down here, and I'm sitting here. So because the camera, like here's my friend, the camera. Um, so if I'm stitching awkwardly, it's because I am literally stitching awkwardly. Um, and so even my, my trolley needle is getting in the way because it's not where I normally have it. All right, see, just no theme and here we go, rambling on. Uh, anyway, I love this thing. Uh, you can get them on 123 Stitch. Just search for trolley needle and Amazon has them too. I'll have links to both below. Uh, the Amazon one is like eight, last time I checked, I think it was like 869 uh, prime shipping. And one, two, three, four. Uh, I think one, two, three stitch was maybe eight dollars plus shipping. So if you're placing a one, two, three stitch order, it's worth it to get it from there. But if you're not, uh, it's better to get it from Amazon uh, because the its shipping is essentially included. Hope I did that right. So anyway, I got my hair done today or as they say, I got my hair did. You know, when that phrase first came out, I had no clue what people were talking about. I'm like, why are you saying that? You only got one hair done. Um, and, and then I realized it was just a phrase, I guess. I don't know, I, I rarely say it, but every time I say I got my hair done, I feel like I should be saying I got my hair did. Weird, weird thing. Anyway, um, and then we came home and I saw on the news, because you know the mister keeps the news on all day long, um, the tornado in Nashville. What? I, I messaged Sarah, because I know she's in Tennessee, and she's okay, and she has family there okay, but I... If you guys are in Tennessee, if you're around Tennessee, if you have family, friends in Tennessee, I am so sorry. My thoughts are with you right now. Um, I just I just said a prayer when I saw the devastation from that and I didn't realize like torna tornadoes isn't something that's ever in my mind. I mean, growing up in California, I know a lot of people from the Midwest are like, how could you live there? Aren't you afraid of earthquakes? No, I'm afraid of tornadoes. Um, but now where I am in Arizona, like the worst thing we have to worry about is uh, heat stroke and um, turning on the air conditioner. And that's pretty much it. Uh, but man, that was just incredible. I just really hope everyone's okay. 
Uh, obviously, there were some people who weren't okay, but um, just I was really surprised when we got home. I just, my heart goes out to all those people, all those family members of those people who perished today. I just, mm, such a, such a difficult thing. And, and Sarah told me that tornadoes do happen there um, more in the spring and summer. And I guess it's getting to be springtime. Um, mm. Anyway, I almost pulled out a tag to just answer questions. I found a decent one, like a get to know you. I know we have our own stitcher, get to know you as a stitcher person. And then I thought, the one thing that has been on my mind, I guess if there's going to be a theme, um, the one thing that's been on my mind lately is, is it's going to sound like a harsh term, but fear mongering. And I almost didn't share this on my channel because as you guys know, I'm a people pleaser. So I tend not to share my own. I mean, obviously this is my channel. So oops, I'll share what I think at times about certain things. But if there's Anything that someone might seriously disagree with or get irritated at me for, I typically will keep my opinion to myself and not share it um, because a people pleaser doesn't want to upset anyone. And if you're a people pleaser, you know what I'm talking about. Um, if you're not a people pleaser, you're probably sitting there like, why would you do that? Well, people, people pleasers like to keep the peace. Think of them as peacekeepers as well, right? But this is something that's really been on my mind lately and I figured I'm going to share it and if someone gets mad at me, that's okay. If you disagree, be respectful in the comments um, and, and you can tell me why you disagree. But if you're wanting to start an argument or a fight, um, uh, I'm not here for that I, and, and I'm not either. But you know, we live in a society nowadays where there's so much fear constantly being put in front of us. I mean, on the news, there's always some new thing, some new worry, some new thing to worry about. I just totally said that redundantly. Um, I didn't want to cross that. Sorry, I'm trying to think as I go along here but my path I didn't follow the path that I laid out ahead of time but we're always we're always hearing from friends from social media from the mainstream media some new thing we need to be afraid of and right now the coronavirus is the big new thing right and not new thing it is serious I'm not going to deny that it is not a serious concern to worry about I'm not I'm not trying to minimize it, but I think it ends up being really maximized, if you know what I mean. Um, two, one, two, three, four, five. I need to go down here. Um, the media right now is just going off about this coronavirus. I'm here to tell you I'm about to get on a cruise ship in a few weeks and I'm not afraid. I'm not worried. I am taking precautions, but I'm tired of, of constantly having things thrown at me that make, that makes me want to try. It makes me feel like we should all be living in fear, right? Fear-based living is no way to be. We already have so many things that ramp up our anxiety. I'm struggling with this hole, y'all. That's what she said. Um, that's what he said, right? Uh, I tell a joke and I tell it wrong. Welcome to my world. Um, no, it is that's what she said. I tell a joke, I tell it right. I think it tell it wrong. I go to explain the joke and now the joke is done. It's bad. Anyway, <sighs> what was I trying to say? You know what? I'm just tired. I'm tired of, 
of hearing all the time that there's a brand new thing that I need to be scared and worried about. And I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm just not going there. I'm not going to be, I, I'm messed up because I keep trying to say something and I'm not saying it right. I didn't mess up. There it is. I did mess up, but not as bad as I thought. What am I trying to tell you guys? I'm just basically trying to say the media is putting the coronavirus out there like the way they're acting is like Ebola and it's not. Now, it is serious for people who are immune compromised. In other words, if you've if you've got um already some respiratory problems, um if if your immune system is already very, very low, you're at high risk for getting this. There's no denying that. And there is no denying that for some people, that is uh, a very bad thing for them. I'm not denying that. However, right now, the influenza, it's terrible this year. You know, we're only 63 days into the year. 63 days and already 16,000 people have died of influenza this year. Like, that's serious. And I know that we certainly don't need to have the coronavirus going around right now at the same time that we're trying to, people are trying to fight influenza. I get that. But I'm tired of having so much of this constant barrage from the news about this is the newest thing and I need to be afraid and I need to be worried and I, I need to put everything on hold and, and not go anywhere and not do anything. No, I don't want to live like that. Um, the Mr. and I, we are going on this cruise. We are going to have an amazing time. We have hand sanitizer. I have a bunch of Wet Ones um, antibacterial wipes to travel with me. Um, I have some that is going into uh, like a big thing of the Lysol wipes you can get at um, Walmart. That's going into my pack luggage. When I get on the cruise ship and get into our room, the first thing I'm going to do is take that out of my luggage and wipe everything down. Now I know that they're supposed to be doing that too, but I'm still going to go through. I'm going to go through, I'm going to get door handles, light switches, everything in the bathroom, the remote control for the TV, all that stuff. Uh, the, you know, uh, drawers, all that stuff. I mean, I can do my part to make sure that I'm being safe and hygienic and sanitary and all that. But I don't need to be afraid and I don't want to be afraid. I think that's the biggest thing It's I know these things are concerning. Right now, my greatest concern is getting the flu more than the coronavirus. And from what I've been seeing on, of interviews of people who are healthy, uh, they, when they were diagnosed or got the coronavirus, they said it was like, in between a cold and a flu. So for some people, the symptoms are really mild. For some, they may not even know they have it because it's it's like getting a, a, a flu, but not even a really bad flu. So we're aware we're going to go on our cruise. We're going to have a lot of fun. I know it. Um, right now, honestly, you guys are probably just going to be like, oh, you're still going with this? The cruise ship we're going to be going on is the Caribbean Princess. If you Google that, you will find that this past cruise that they just finished and the one before, both came back early because they had outbreaks of the norovirus on it. Not the coronavirus, the norovirus. Yeah. Um, so the first time the ship went out a month ago, they were denied entry into a couple ports in the Caribbean because they had outbreaks of the norovirus and they ended up with like 489 or something like that people being infected. And then they came back three days early and supposedly did a big deep clean disinfection of the ship. And then it went back out for its next thing. They had three days to get that stuff under control, right? Uh, and then Actually, I want to do that the other way so I don't run my thread across blank spaces. Um, they went back out for this 
this cruise, just this last one, and they got like 200 and some odd people infected with the norovirus again. So they went home early. There's two more cruises. They're on one right now to the Panama Canal. And then they're going to do another Caribbean one before we embark and set sail. So the mister and I are watching. We do have travel insurance. I mean, there are precautions you take, right? You do have to be reasonably smart about this stuff. Sorry for the interruption. Callie called and I haven't talked to her in uh, like a couple weeks. Um, and so she called to update me on some of her life stuff. I'll update you in a minute. Um, I actually stopped the video and had to go back because we chatted for a little while. And um, and I finished, as you can see, I finished my my thread. I almost started over because, you know, I, I get to talking and then I get to, I have to stop and figure out what I'm doing. Um, and, and then I distract myself in the middle of my thought. And I, um, I almost just start over, but thought, no, I don't want to. <laughs> I'm lazy, and you guys know me well enough by now. I think some of you can fill in the blanks. Um, but anyway, I had to go rewatch the last minute to remember what I was talking about. Uh, and I was talking about the Caribbean princess we're going to be on um, and the norovirus. Um, they, I, they said that they deep cleaned it the first time, so we don't know if it was leftover from that cruise and someone didn't just deep clean well enough uh, or if someone brought it on um, but there was half as many cases this last time so like I said they're back out on the Panama Canal right now uh, for one week and then they have another two-week cruise and um, there's a couple of um, YouTube channels that we focus on a lot with what's going on. One is called Traveling with Bruce, and I think that's two L's instead of one. And um, he always does some really great updates on what's going on. So we listen uh, to what he has to say and stuff like that. But you know, I think my biggest point in all of this is, yes, there's cause to be concerned about many things. I mean, the flu season this year, it's bad. Um, and if you have a compromised immune system, I understand it's bad out there for you. These, these things are no joke. The coronavirus is no joke. Um, for those that are healthier, um, I just, I'm tired of everyone, and by everyone I mean the media, um, fomenting fear about these things. Um, be smart, I, and the wash your hands memes right now are killing me. I mean, for one, we shouldn't have to tell people to wash their hands, but honestly, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a bathroom and gone the bathroom, heard somebody come in, do their business, and walk out without washing their hands. I mean, like, how is that remotely possible? And I, I don't understand it. And I've seen people go rinse their hands off with water, but not use soap. What are you doing? I want to tell these people. Like, I don't because, remember, people please are non-confrontational. But I do give them a little bit of stank eye. Like, what are you doing right now? Why did you not wash your hands? Um, you see me a lot in videos touch my face. That is something I am, I've been trying really hard to work on because I do do that. Um, I know that the medical community is asking people to please stop hoarding masks and, and buying them if you're not sick because they need them and they can't get them. Like these are, like we're creating another problem in our panic. Some lady the other day here in Lake Havasu at Walmart, and now this is a touristy town. Right now there's not a lot of tourists from other places. It's more snowbird visitors. But this woman uh, at Walmart went and filled her shopping cart with all the masks, completely wiped out the masks here. And I know that hand sanitizer has been is off of many shelves. I mean, we need to take precautions. We need to be careful. People build your immune sy systems up too. Um, Sweet Daylene sent me a message to let me know um, um, I forgot the name of it. 
builds uh, helps build your immune system up and stays in your system. I'll, I'll have it probably down. I can't in the camera here. <laughs> um, uh, and so I got some and we started taking that and we started taking some vitamin C because we do um, vitamin C is not going to hurt you. Um, and we do want to build up our immune system. So we want to make sure we're strong and healthy. If you're at risk, this is no time for you to be traveling and you need to take care of yourself for sure. Um, but also please, I just, I just, I'm just tired. I'm tired of turning on the news and them acting like everyone's gonna catch Ebola and we're all gonna die because that is how they're saying. That's how they're putting this out there rather than just being reasonable, rather than reminding people um, be more careful than usual. Don't touch things you don't need to be touching. Uh, if you're sick, stay home. I mean, these are reasonable things to make. Letting people know that, yes, coronavirus has flu-like symptoms. We don't want to be spreading that around, especially because we're in the middle of a really bad flu season already. Um, we're just doing... Uh, the media is not doing us any favors right now. I suppose that's my vent, my rant. If you disagree with me, I understand. Um, consider this my op-ed for the day, right? And it's just, I just wanted to get some of that off my chest just to remind everyone to take a brush, breath of fresh air. I don't know that that's the right saying, but you know, just take a breath. Let's let's just not buy into the panic because you know what news sells when it's bad disasters sell and that's what the news cares about negativity is what sells that's when people start watching and that's to me that's when i want to turn off the tv i we're all just living our lives and we're going to do the best we can to get through the days and, and be safe, keep our kids safe, keep our parents safe. Um, and that's all we can do. That's, that's, that's all we need to be focused on doing right now. So I hope my video wasn't enraging or discouraging to anyone um, because it, it certainly wasn't meant to be. I didn't mean to do that cross yet. Uh, but just more of a I'm irritated with with the the media and, and all of the people fomenting fear. We we got enough to worry in our lives without having to wonder if we're going to go to the store and catch some something. You know, we've already got that to worry about. We don't have to make it a thousand times worse by making the story, maximizing the story. Like I said earlier, I don't want to minimize it, but I'm tired of the news media maximizing it. That's the too long, didn't read version. I don't want to minimize it, but they're maximizing it, and that's got to stop. There we go. So how about we end this video on a happy little positive note, and I'll talk about how Callie's doing, right? Okay, so Callie is... Um, she went to an orientation to start uh, her education to become an esthetician. So it's like a six month program. She waited this long because if you lived in the Central Valley of California or if you know anything about it, Tule fog gets really, really bad in the winter. And her uh, stepmom and dad convinced her, thank goodness, to not start going to school um, in the winter. They said, why don't you hold off until March instead of starting in January? Because the Thule fog is bad and it, it can be bad. So, uh, she is now getting to start. She's super excited. I forgot what school she's going to, like the Milan School of Beauty or something like that. I don't know. This could be completely wrong, but, um, in Fresno. And um, she gets to start going to school. She's excited about it. Uh, she said orientation was kind of boring. It was like 30 minutes and and then at 5 o'clock. 
Um, and then she had to head back up the hill. That's what they call it. If you're in, Fr- if you're in Fresno and you're going back up to Oakers, uh, that's the, the foothills of the Sierra Nevada. So that's what everyone calls it, heading up the hill. Um, and so basically she did that at going home time and traffic heading up the hill at going home time is just ridiculous completely. So that was not good planning, but on the school's part, but I guess they just do what they can do to schedule stuff in. So she starts on Monday. I'm super excited for her. Um, to get going on that. She's going to have the best time. I am bummed though, because I don't get the free, the free facials from her training. Her stepmom does. I told her I'm so jealous of April right now because April gets to have all of the free facials. And she's like, mom, all you have to do is move back here. No, thank you. I am perfectly happy in Arizona and Oregon as my home. I'm not moving back to California. But, um, yeah, well, if I can move in with Elena, I consider that. Maybe I'll just sneak in and she won't know I'm there. Um, and let's see. So, yeah, she's really excited to get started on that. So I was happy to listen to her. Um, I miss her so much. Uh, she was the last one that was here. And it's just, I was telling Mr. the other day that we were driving, it was Saturday, we were gonna go out shopping, and, um, there we go, and uh, we just were in the car driving to the post office and then gonna do a little thrifting, and I told him, you know, I like our life. I, this, this little life we have, just me and you, I wasn't sure how I would handle not having Callie around and none of the kids being around, but it's good. I'm loving it. I love that we just get in the car. It's just me and the mister. We can go anywhere, do anything. Um, and and I, I like this life. And he just started laughing. He's all, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you do. I'm so glad. He's my best friend. It helps. It helps that he's my best friend and and my husband so that we get to go do all the fun things together. I know I talk about Sarah being my bestie all the time. Um, and I know uh, that I, like, he's my, my best friend that lives nearby me. Like, I don't have any woman friends nearby. It's just the mister. And Sarah's my bestie, but she's my bestie, like, long distance because she's not nearby. But I feel like I've got a lot of bestie relationships, good ones, you know? I'm not trying to minimize any relationship in particular, but I think it's, I never really had that in my life, Um, really close friends. It wasn't until this community and finding this community that I discovered good friends, you know, my tribe as it were. I didn't have that before. I didn't really have bestie friends or good friends or... Is that weird? I don't think I'm the only one like that. I have no idea where my floss is. Oh, it's on the floor. Excuse me. Um, I must have dropped it, set it in my lap and dropped it. But I don't know what it is. This community is just so amazing and I'm so grateful for everyone. Um, Probably in any other life, in any other community, I wouldn't have had as honest a video with my thoughts as I did with this one. Um, it was interesting. I I know I'm a little rambly right now, but I was talking to the mister a while ago. He's not the kind of person to censor his thoughts at all or think about how is this going to make the person I'm talking to feel. Um, he always thought that his thoughts weren't important enough to have any weight given to them that he would just say whatever, which is a completely odd thought to me. But, you know, he said after a while, he realized that maybe his thoughts were valuable. So he should be careful with what he says in case people take them as valuable. And I'm like, okay, that's weird. Um, 
But for me, when I say something, for a people pleaser kind of person, a non-confrontational person, every single thing you think and, and go to say out loud, you think about how maybe this is just me. If you're a people pleaser, let me know if this is you too. I think about how it's going to affect the person I'm talking to. So if I know that I'm going to say something that someone may disagree with or not like, I won't say it because I don't want it to cause anyone any grief, any uh, a moment of um, unhappiness or irritation or anything like that. And I told him I've lived my life that way my entire life. I have always censored my thoughts based on the people around me. And by censor, I also mean change how I think to accommodate those around me. And we were talking um, a couple weeks ago. I said, you know, for people who don't understand that about people pleasers, for people who just strongly speak their convictions, uh, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but those kinds of people don't understand how taxing that is on a people pleaser. I said, I've spent the last five years trying to find my own, my own beliefs, my own thoughts, my own way of thinking. And he couldn't, he literally could not understand what I was saying. And he's all, will you believe what you believe? And I said, not for me. I've adjusted everything I've thought to make the people around me happy. And he really was just dumbfounded that anyone would do that. Maybe it's just me. But I told him I've tried really hard the last few years to really think about what I believe, what I how I feel about things and and try to stand firm in that. And I said, it's really hard to find who, who you are when you've changed who you are to accommodate everyone around you. It's a weird thought, right? It sounds weird coming out of my mouth, but it's true. That's how I've lived my life, um, my whole life. And it's why I take comments so much to heart. Um, if someone disagrees with me, I, I really... It causes me to question every single thing that I've thought or said about the matter. And um, so now I've taken to really researching things to make sure that, like, if I'm going to make a statement like I did today uh, about this, I really read a lot. I listen a lot. Um, I really look into it a lot to make sure that this is truly what I feel and how I believe. This probably sounds weird. I'm probably now I'm just rambling and saying weird stuff and everybody's going to be like, what is wrong with you? All right. Thank you guys for the visit today. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face like I did 5,000 times. Um, and yeah, if you don't have to go out, don't go out. Like, what's that meme the introverts have been preparing for this moment their whole life? If you're an introvert, you're set. Um, I will talk to you guys on Sunday with my Stitchy update. Have a great week. See you then.